lovely to be here, except there's a huge light glaring in my face. Um, thank you so much, uh, sponsors, for inviting me here. I'm particularly addressing this talk to students because I see lots of youngsters in the audience and I was warned that there would be some great theoreticians and some very young students from India. So my talk is more oriented towards the younger people. Uh, what I want to do is take a quick look at history. In about 45 minutes, maybe we'll look at the entire history of the world and try to pull some principles for architects out of that. So let's talk first about architecture, technology, and society. Let me, I'm going to try out whether, ah, yes, it comes now. The history of civilization can be mapped by looking at the ways people aggregate themselves into ever larger communities of social, economic, and political decision makers. This map can be the plans of buildings created for, to shelter and manage the coming together of peoples into civil societies. Five critical measures can be applied to analyze all buildings collectively evolving in a sequence of innovation over time. I think the word sequence is important because these days we have see people copying the Eiffel Tower, putting the Statue of Liberty into housing society, and it becomes a joke. All of these things had their place in history, they're part of a sequence, and they cannot be repeated. Now, five critical measures I want to talk about which relate to technology. The weights of the structures supporting buildings continually became lighter in proportion to the larger and larger volumes uh, that they enclose. Did I miss something there? Okay. This, this picture uh, shows three, three structures. One is 2500 BC. Uh, it's actually a pretty advanced structure because it has beams, but they're very large columns that take up a huge part of the space. The middle one is about the 1200. Uh, it's Charter's Cathedral. Now, what's interesting here is you suddenly get columns breaking into rib beams, and it's holding up panels in the ceiling, which are really non-structural. They're just strong enough to hold themselves up. And then you have a, a Forbes Marshall, very large factory in Pune that I'm just finishing, uh, which is a very lightweight structure and encloses a space of about 110 meters by 110 meters uh, to, to use for industrial purposes. 